we're doing here on Standing for Truth, please hit that subscribe button because we are just getting started. Hey everyone, Matt Man here. Today I have a fun video for you talking about Young Earth creation versus evolution, but not a specific scientific argument versus another. Instead, this is going to be an overview of Young Earth creation versus evolution regarding subjects that get brought up by atheists who have no idea what they're talking about. So sit back and enjoy as we jump right into this. Atheists are constantly griping about the science of Young Earth creation, but from what I can tell, they either ignore the parts that they do understand or they know nothing about it at all. How do I know that? Because if they did, they wouldn't make such idiotic comments all the time. One thing that I hear is how bad Young Earth creation is. How can it be bad when you don't even understand it? And how can it be bad when we use Young Earth creation in medicine? For example, we view mutations as something that are extremely harmful, always have been, and something that over time will lead to a worse and worse state, for not just humans, but all life. As where evolution views mutations as a good thing overall, you know, the driving force behind evolution, something that pushes evolution forward. Don't worry about harmful mutations, they say. Selection will weed them out over time. The reality is we couldn't really have more of an opposite view. And if they want to try to argue what is actually better for medicine, well then again this goes hands down to young earth creation since evolutionary thinking has led to doctors to the removal of important organs deemed evolutionary leftovers, as where the Young Earth creation model says there are no vestigial organs. And the Young Earth creation model is specifically used by the National Institute of Health, not the evolutionary model. This is the biggest health organization on Earth, so there actually is no debate over which model is more important and how we view medicine. The Young Earth creation model wins that, hands down. Good science does not ban opposition. Biblical creation is good science because Christian schools always present the theory of evolution. But evolution is bad science because evolutionists seek to ban the teaching of biblical creation in schools. And again, I can give you some examples from the United Kingdom. Atheist groups have aggressively lobbied the United Kingdom government to ban biblical creation. Here's a quotation from uh, Sir David Attenborough, uh, who said the teaching of creationism should be banned in science lessons. Notice again this implied message that creationism is not science. It's something different to science. That's a falsehood. Just to make a note here, if Isaac Newton were here today, atheist lobby groups would ban him from going into science lessons because he would talk about his faith in a creator. But if you think this is a worrying trend, look at this quote. Dr. Alice Roberts, a professor of public engagement in science in the UK, has said this recently. New laws are needed to stop private Christian schools teaching creationism alongside evolution in science lessons. That's a bit worrying, isn't it? This could be coming across to the United States as well. You may as well ban Christian schools if you're going to ban uh, the teaching of Genesis in a Christian school. If Isaac Newton was here today, the atheist lobby groups would want to ban him from Christian schools talking about his faith in a creator. I go back to Ambrose uh, Fleming, that great creationist scientist at Cambridge University. He said this, It is disastrous to the ethical development of the young to lead them to believe that men are descended from monkeys. And I agree with him. If you teach children that they've descended from animals, then surely they're going to be tempted to behave like animals. And if Sir Ambrose Fleming were here today, I'm sure he would be appalled at the pressure being applied by the atheist lobby groups on governments to teach evolution in schools. I believe that the fact that the critics most use arguments against Young Earth creation is that the majority don't believe it and that peer review don't allow it is probably the dumbest arguments to date. Peer review means nothing in determining what truth actually is. Peer review itself is selective and biased. 
and don't even look at it from another perspective. Are they not realizing that the evolutionary theory is the only theory that's protected by law? If they can't see this, then they are so indoctrinated that they are beyond help, and it's just time to move on, because these people can't be helped. People talk glibly about science. What is science? People coming out of a university with a master's degree or a PhD, you take them into the field, and they, they literally don't believe anything and this is a peer-reviewed paper. It's the only thing they accept. And you say to them, but let's observe, let's think, let's discuss. They don't do it. It's just, is it in a peer-reviewed paper or not? That's their view of science. I think it's pathetic. Gone into universities as bright young people, they come out of them brain dead, not even knowing what science means. They think it means peer-reviewed papers, etc. No, that's academia. And if a paper is peer-reviewed, it means everybody thought the same, therefore they approved it. An unintended consequence is that when new knowledge emerges, new scientific insights, they can never ever be peer-reviewed. So we're blocking all new advances in science that are big advances. If you look at the breakthroughs in science, almost always they don't come from the center of that profession. They come from the fringe. The finest candle makers in the world couldn't even think of electric lights. They don't come from within. They often come from outside the brakes. We're going to kill ourselves because of stupidity. Another thing that evolution loses on is the outcome of that way of thinking. Meaning, what does somebody who grows up believing evolution is correct over creation? What are their mindsets like? Well, now we know. Since evolution theory has made its dominance in school starting in the 1960s, we can now see the trend. And the data is clear. Evolution leads to the worst mindset on Earth. Kids growing up believing in evolution and no God end up suicidal, depressed, medicated, and nearly every single school shooter has been an atheist. Convicted American serial killer and sex offender cannibal Jeffrey Dahmer said it best when he admitted that it was the ideas of evolution that made him do what he did. Listen to him in his own words. Admit this. I, gee, I feel guilty. You know, I, there's just feelings of guilt. What happened? What did I do? What could I have done? Let me ask, when did you first feel that, that everyone is accountable for their actions? I always, I always believe the, uh, the lie that uh, evolution is truth, the theory of evolution is truth, that we all just came from uh, the slime and uh, when, we, when we died, you know, that was it. There was nothing. So it, the whole theory cheapens life and uh, started reading books about how that show how evolution is is just a complete lie. There's there's no there's no basis in science to uh, to uphold it. And I've come to since come to believe that uh, that the Lord Jesus Christ is the true creator of uh, the heavens and the earth. It just didn't just happen. And uh, I have accepted him as my Lord and Savior. And I believe that I as long as well as everyone else will be accountable to him. Well, at that period of time, I had drifted away from a belief in a supreme being. And I never, as a result, passed along the feeling that we are all accountable in the end. He owns us. And that basic concept is very fundamental to all of us. You feel that the absence, at least for a while, of a strong religious faith and yes, belief for some years may have prevented you from instilling some of that in Jeff. That's right. Is that how you feel? Yes, I think I had a big, uh, big part to do to do with it. I mean, uh, if you don't, if a person doesn't think that there there is a God to be accountable to, then then what's what's the point of, of trying to uh, modify your behavior to keep it within acceptable ranges. Uh, that's how I thought anyway. And uh, I've since come to believe that uh, 
the Lord Jesus Christ is truly God, uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They're the only true God. All the effects of evolution that I know of are evil and wicked. We teach the kids they're an animal. We teach them there's no moral standard, there's no absolute. What do you expect? This theory has led directly to the rise of communism, humanism, Marxism, Nazism, socialism, and the coming New World Order. The dangers of this evolution theory. Folks, it's not just dumb, it's dangerous. You're going to be shocked to see, how many, to see how many people have died because of this theory. Why did we fight the Vietnam War? Why did we fight World War II? Why was World War I fought? Why are we fighting against communism? How many people did Hitler kill? How many did Stalin kill? They said, if Darwin's title of the origin of species is, is it racist? Yeah, of course it's racist. Gotcha. Another popular idiotic statement I hear a lot is that religion is the cause for all wars in the world. Nothing could be further from the truth. It's just another ignorant statement made by those who have never investigated the subject even for a minute. As a matter of fact, in the book Encyclopedia of Wars, written by two atheists, it was found that 66 wars were started because of Islam, no surprise there, and 57 made up the total amount of all other religious wars combined. That means out of a total of 1,763 wars, 1,640 of them were not religiously motivated. Again proving the absolute idiocy of atheists who are just so mad they can't even come up with a good argument. All our lives we've been inundated with propaganda and today there are so many presumptions about that that are associated with science, that have a veneer of science, a look, a feel, a appearance of science that are unprovable. They're unprovable theories. For example, theory of evolution is unprovable. And if you believe that the theory of evolution has anything to do with reality, you need to read books and look at films in opposition to the theory of evolution and see how absurd the whole thing is based on science. Because what's happened is, is they've taken theories and pushed them in as facts. And that's, we, I'd say that's bullying, right? They bully in the theory. And it's done for social conditioning. In fact, the whole idea of social engineering is a major issue today. In fact, if you look at what's happening politically, that pretty much whatever we're calling socialism, communism, fascism today is about social engineering, that they're going to, from the top down, show you what the best way to run a government is and how you should behave and who's going to go where. And we're going to, we're going to take this race group, we're going to push them in front of that race group. And that social engineering is really an aspect of scientism. It has some kind of a veneer of science. If you talk to those people, they default into their materialistic science.
It's an absurdity, but they've got you believing it so intensely that people will troll me and almost like to the point of death threats. like this type of content, be sure to hit subscribe and also smash that like button. It actually does help. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.